let's go to the last portion here in our study, and this is going to be Exodus 23, verses 18 and 19, and there's some kind of weird stuff here. Let's read it. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, nor is the fat of my feast to remain overnight until morning. You shall bring the choice first fruits of your soil into the house of the Lord your God. You are not to boil a young goat in the milk of its mother. Okay, so here is some stuff, uh, different things, and some of this is very tangled up stuff, like why we don't really completely get it. Even if you look at the Bible commentaries, you'll see that some of these guys are scratching their heads. Some of the people are really struggling to understand uh, some of the significance of these things. And I think that part of the answer here is there's a lot of pagan rituals happening around God's people. And although we may not have all the information here, God is trying to keep them from blending in these pagan practices into the worship of the true God. And that seems to be the best explanation we have for some of these bits. Uh, eating the blood, you're not to eat the uh, blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread. Well, eating blood, that's a pretty unappetizing thought, isn't it? But some of the pagan nations would do that. They thought there was life in the blood and they took it in kind of a mystical way. And so they would want to mix that in with their stuff. And so God says, no, no, we're not going to do that. We don't, that's not for you and me. We have a higher plan than that. So we have no blood in with that. These pagan, these pagan rituals, God is forbidding them. They're not for God's people. And when we bring in these religious practices, walking in a labyrinth or all these different things that at different times become, po become popular, uh, we are really at risk of blending in these different pagan pieces that aren't New Testament, Old Testament. They're not any kind of Bible Testament worship. They are modernizations. They are creeping into the church, strange ideas, notions that don't have any part with the Bible. Well, let's look at this last one. This is one that's probably the most confusing. You are not to boil a young goat in the milk of its mother. And uh, guess what? When you look at the different Bible commentaries, you find, you find what? Well, there's a lot of confusion about what this really means. Um, I have here uh, Victor Hamilton, Exodus, one of the main commentaries I'm using in this series to just double check and look at things. And let's see what Hamilton, uh, let me just mention what Hamilton has for us here. He gives several different possibilities here, but he finally goes to the one that he says. A third view, the one that I embrace, takes its start from a comment by Philo, blah, blah, blah. Uh, quote, it is grossly improper that the substance which fed the living animal should be used to season and flavor the same after its death. Man should not misuse what has sustained its life, unquote. Do not use, says this law, something that brings life, milk for sustenance, to bring death, milk for cooking, so Hamilton, after looking at different views about what this means, don't boil the kid in its mother's milk, he says it's a mixing of life and death, so therefore we shouldn't do it. That's a Christian commentary. And then we have the JPS Torah commentary, Exodus, I've been using, and this is uh, Sarna, right? This is, uh, now this isn't, these are people who believe in Judaism, but they don't necessarily believe in Jesus. But Sarna, uh, so it's interesting to look at it from the standpoint of Judaism, and sometimes we see something useful there. Rashbam, Bekorshor, Ibn Ezra, and Abravanel all in various ways adduce a humanitarian motivation akin to that cited in the comment to 2229. Rashbam further suggests that because festivals were celebrated with feasts of meat and because goats are generally multiparous and have a high yield of milk, it was customary to slaughter one of the kids of a fresh litter and to cook it in its mother's milk. The Torah looks upon such a practice as exhibiting insensitivity to the animal's feelings. The explanation of Rashbam has been buttressed by the modern observation that in biblical times, goats were far more plentiful than sheep in the land of Israel and were the main source of milk. The flesh of the young kid is more tender and more delicate in flavor than the lamb. Also, since the estrus cycle of goats occurs during the summer months and parturation takes place in the rainy season, the earliest litter would be produced just around the time of Sukkot. This injunction, therefore, regulates the festivities of the fest at the festival of the ingathering of the harvest. The interdiction against boiling a kid in its mother's milk was generalized to outlaw the mixing of all meat and milk, meaning all dairy products. Its threefold repetition in the Torah is, was explained by Ra Rabbi Simeon Bar Yoa as indicative of the three aspects of the prohibition, cooking such a mixture, eating it, and deriving any benefit from it. So anyway, the, the bottom line is, if you look at Stuart, these three that I've looked at and some other commentaries I've looked at, 
Uh, there's different thoughts about this. Nobody really knows for sure. And if you go back before that, uh, Sarna is saying the same thing as Hamilton, actually. We think this was to prohibit some uh, pagan things that were people were trying to bring them into Christianity. That's the short line here. So anyway, we may not understand each piece, but we do know what? It is true. We don't want to be uh, the people who bring in anything pagan into Christianity. So let's be true to God, be true to the worship of the true God, and let's make sure we don't incorporate anything pagan into what we're doing. God bless you. See you back tomorrow morning for some more.